Hello, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Before I get started, I'm gonna be live tomorrow, Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. So if you're around and want to join, I hope you do, they're a lot of fun. And if you plan on joining and have anything you want me to talk about, just put it in the comment section and I'll look into it before then. But I look forward to seeing you guys. And uh, this video is going to be about a man named Peter. He was a professor at Portland State University and just gave his letter of resignation, which is public. And we're gonna go through a little bit of that. The reason he is resigning is because he is tired of the woke, social justice-y, illiberal nature of his university. And quite frankly, a lot of universities and a lot now of even K through 12 schools, which is what we've talked about a lot. And Peter actually came on my radar a long time ago, a few years ago. He was on Joe Rogan with James Lindsay and another woman. And they sort of, a lot of people were calling it a hoax. And I guess it was a hoax. But him, James Lindsay, and this woman had a brilliant idea. And what they were really doing was trying to show and prove the absurdity that is now gender studies, identity politics, which they call the grievance studies. And so what they did was they wrote a bunch of papers. They wrote 20 papers in total and then submitted them to a lot of scholarly journals. Seven of them actually made it into these journals and they were about all kinds of absurd things. One of them, the title of the paper was uh, the conceptual penis as a social construct. Another one was basically the mind Kemp, and then they just changed out the wording to make it from a feminist perspective. And how far some of these papers got and the fact that seven of them actually got published just goes to show you how absurd some of these things have gotten. And before I move on with him further, I wanted, I wanted to bring this up too. So I don't know if you remember, well, of course you remember, it was just the other week, we were talking about the teacher that Project Veritas exposed. And this goes along the same lines of what we're seeing in these universities and what we're seeing in K through 12 schools now. And this is basically what his resignation letter is about, is this, uh, we're not teaching critical th thinkers were indoctrinating them and for a long time a lot of liberal media have said oh this is conservatives just fear mongering this isn't happening well project veritas actually caught that teacher admitting undercover that he is indoctrinating kids uh, i have 180 days six hours a day to turn these kids into revolutionaries we saw pictures of his classroom where he had a poster of mao who killed, Mao was even worse than the worst of the worst. Mao killed 45 million people with his policies, more than Stalin, more than the man with the mustache, more than all of that. Um, had a poster of Mao in his classroom, had an Antifa poster in his, or Antifa flag, not even a poster, a flag in his classroom. And something, I, not only that, his tattoos, he would wear shirts with the hammer and sickle, would stamp his, his students' work, not with the typical like, good job, or there you go, try again next time, or whatever else you put. My teachers always had those stars that they would put on our, our, our paperwork. No, he would stamp them with pictures of Kim Jong-un, and then there was this one too, which I didn't even see before, go to the Google. Like what? But something I noticed in his classroom uh, that I didn't even notice when we were talking about this before, this is how bad this is. He had a, if you look in the corner of this picture, this is the, the classroom of the teacher that was uh, exposed by Project Veritas. That's a swastika on the wall of his classroom. And the parents were so furious at the school board over this uh, because the, the timing was just pretty crazy. When this got exposed, there just happened to be a school board meeting the very next day and the parents were furious at the school board and they were like, hey, thank you for you know firing these, this teacher. We appreciate that, but why, why wasn't anything done about this earlier? And who, are, who else are, what, who are these other teachers that are doing this? He admitted in his video that there are several other teachers that think the exact same way that he does. And after looking into this more and thinking about it more, all of this stuff is up in his classroom. And how did anyone not know that this was going on and kids work? Are, I mean, it's just, it's wild. 
This teacher couldn't be any more of an open communist if he tried. And the fact that this flew under the radar is just, it's insane. Uh, and not only is, is what he's doing indoctrinating kids, no matter what political side you're on, indoctrinating your kids into your own political beliefs is just wrong on so many moral levels. But not only that, specifically what he's he was doing uh, with having all this communist stuff on the wall and indoctrinating his kids into this belief system, it goes directly against California Education Code, who specifically calls out indoctrinating kids into communism. You are not supposed to teach that. You're allowed to teach the facts of it, clearly, history. Well, all of that being said, let's take a peek at this professor's letter of resignation and again he taught philosophy at portland state university for 10 plus years and portland as we all know is just the hub of far left ideology so actually the fact that he survived this long is pretty incredible and i think you know the letter in and of itself it's sad that he's resigning because I, I've known about him for a little bit and he, in my opinion, is an asset to any university that he teaches at. But, you know, it's also something that he says he sort of had to do. And he explains why here. He says, I never once believed, nor do I now, that the purpose of instruction was to lead my students to a particular conclusion. Rather, I sought to create the conditions for rigorous thought to help them gain the tools and hunt and furrow for their own conclusion. This is why I became a teacher and why I love teaching. But brick by brick, the university has made this kind of intellectual exploration impossible. It has transformed a an area of free inquiry into a social justice factory whose only inputs were race, gender, and victimhood, and whose only outputs were grievance and division. Students at Portland State are not being taught to think, rather they are being trained to mimic the moral certainty of ideologues. Faculty and administration have abdicated the university's truth-seeking mission and instead drive intolerance of divergent beliefs and opinions. This has created a culture of offense where students are now afraid to speak openly and honestly. I noticed the signs of illiberalism that has now been fully swallowed by the academy quite early during my time at Portland State. I witnessed students refusing to engage with different points of view. Questions from faculty at diversity trainings that challenged approved narratives were instantly dismissed. Those who asked for evidence to justify new institutional policies were accused of microaggression, and professors were accused of bigotry for assigning texts written by philosophers who happened to have been European and male. At first, I didn't realize how systemic this was, and I believed I could question this new culture, so I began asking questions. What is the evidence that trigger warnings in safe spaces contribute to student learning? How should racial consciousness be the lens through which we view our roles as educators? How do we decide that cultural appropriation is immoral? Unlike my colleagues, I asked these questions out loud and in public. I decided to study the new values that were engulfing Portland State and so many other educational institutions. Values that sound wonderful, like diversity, equity, and inclusion, but might actually be just the opposite. The more I read the primary source material produced by critical theorists, the more I sus suspected that their conclusions reflected the postulates of an ideology, not insights based on evidence. The letter actually goes on and on and on. It's a really long letter, but that's just a little chunk of it. And what what is the most alarming, I guess, besides the ideology sort of being taught on students is that just the mere questioning of it will have you condemned. I don't see anything wrong with introducing critical race theory to a college student who is a lot more mature and developed than a K through 12 student as an idea or as one set of ideas, but it's being taught as the end all be all. And like I just said, if you question it, you're condemned. I want to read one more part of his letter and then I'm finished with that. But he also said, I began networking with student groups who had similar concerns and brought in speakers to explore these subjects from a critical perspective. And it became increasingly clear to me that the in incidents of illiberalism I had witnessed over the years were not just isolated events, but a part of an institution wide problem. It's wild to me because the liberal universities 
historically are liberal, where you can have ideas and question things, it's turned illiberal, it's turned authoritarian. And that word illiberal, I actually heard it just last night. I was watching an interview with Tucker Carlson, who spoke about his time. I don't know if you know, but Tucker Carlson for a long time worked on uh, CNN, he worked on MSNBC, and he talked about the culture there and how this is painted to us as our liberal media, but they're in fact illiberal. And one of their main duties now, or what they're doing, is they're not trying to get to the truth of thing. Really, they're trying to protect the power structure, and they will do anything and everything to protect that structure. We talked about this just the other day with Joe Rogan and even uh, the We Spa thing, how quickly all of these journalists and media institutions were to go with a false story simply because it went with their chosen narrative rather than trying to get to the truth of the story, which in that case would have taken one simple phone call. They just all jumped on board and went with the narrative that they thought fit their point of view. I don't know if you guys remember that article in Time Magazine where they basically admitted it in the open. It was the shadow campaign behind the 2020 election. And this came out right after the election where it basically said that all these media outlets uh, basically conspired together to prop up Biden and then make Trump look bad, which they even hid certain stories from the public. So that just goes to show you their their view as journalists isn't to bring you the truth, it's to protect their own, get their own in office, and to push their own political agenda. I apologize, I didn't mean to jump on the media when we were talking about universities and schools and education, but that word of liberal just made me think about what Tucker was saying. And really, these are all the institutions that are supposed to be liberal, our universities, Hollywood even, media, uh, these are supposed to be for the people. Anyway, uh, not to circle back, but I guess I am circling back. I wanted to go all the way back to Gabriel Guype. That That is the teacher's name. That's the Project Veritas teacher that I was talking about earlier. Some of those screenshots I took were from a news clip that I saw, and this was a local news clip talking about the teacher and there was something else really significant in this clip, and I'm gonna play it for you right now. And this is actually from a student who was in his class who spoke to this news station anonymously, and I just wanted to show you a statement from this student. The parent we spoke with also said, a previous student told their child, quote, Guy did nothing to prepare his students to do well on the AP exam at the end of the year, end quote. Many of them stating none of them received, quote, higher than a three on the exam, which is the lowest score you can get and still gain some college credit. And, and there you have it, straight from the mouth of one of these students. So this individual teacher, and I'm sure there are many, many like him, spent so much time uh, pushing his political agenda on these kids. He spent a lot of time and energy doing that decorating his classroom, stamping their work, making sure they do their extra credit, going out and being activists. But he seemed to have failed at his main job, which was to educate. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Let me know what you think about everything. I'll see you later. Bye.